الحمد لله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد خلقنا الإنسان ونعلم ما توسبس به نفسه ونحن أقرب إليه من حبل الوريد إذ يتلقى المتلقيان عن اليمين وعن الشمال القعيد ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد صدق الله العظيم If the brothers could move forward so as to keep some space for the brothers who are coming with later inshallah ta'ala So this particular ayat of surah Qaf in 26 gives Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very close to us with his knowledge he could see every action that we do even in the, in the darkest of the rooms even in the layers under the earth and on top of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed angels to record our action one on the right side one on the left side and Allah says not even a word uttered by the men except that there is a watcher very much ready to take it and record it ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد whatever we utter it just comes out straight onto the record book now there's difference of opinion is that that every word is recorded or the good or the bad words are recorded because there's a lot of mubahat in between so the three types either you have said something okay perfect good nice or you've said something completely wrong haram disliked and there's in between us something which hasn't got anything good or bad like this futile wasteful thing so there's difference of opinion some scholar says only the good deed and the bad deed good saying and the bad sayings are recorded not the futile not not the sorry the the permissible okay ones but the other scholars who say that no it's everything is recorded even they say that on the day that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam get our actions presented as the hadith say on Mondays and on Thursdays and that was one of the reason why Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would fast on Mondays and Thursdays the two reasons he gave one was that i was born on monday he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's why he would fast in order to thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every week most of the time and on those two days mondays and thursdays actions are presented to allah to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam of the ummah and he would look at that and he would make dua seeking forgiveness on our behalf so we get some support there as well so these are the middle bits which are then cleanse out of our records but anyway whatever happens definitely are good deeds and bad deeds good action and bad action good sayings and bad sayings are recorded and that is why on the day of judgment when we found our record when we are there and then we see our report i hope inshallah that on the right hand as allah says amma man utiya kitabahu bi yameen he would be very happy the one who has been given the book on the right side he would say ha u buqra u kitab ya kam kam and have a read of my record my results my a level results just came yesterday or gcse is coming will be already out they be very happy and pleased with the record and then we show it to others and wa amma those those people who are given wa amma man utiya kitabahu either wara aw dhahri from behind their back they're not good enough to have receive it in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in the left hands may allah save us all from being in that position and what would he say ya laytani lam uta kitabiya i wish i was never given my record book i never had anything i wish the death that i had was the final thing but that would be qadiya that would have done the qada of me killed me and forever i wasn't resurrected again my wealth didn't help me my status didn't help me my skills my beauty nothing my mal my wealth nothing helped me at all obviously we then dragged into hell fire will save us all from that situation 
So besides our physical action, our speech is very important as well. That, that, that is why one of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Sahih Bukhari, Imam Bukhari rahmatullah alayhi, brought this hadith from the authority of Sahih ibn Sa'ad al-Ansari radiallahu ta'ala and saying that man yadman li ma bayna lahyayhi wa ma bayna rijlayhi admanu li bil jannah whoever guarantees for whatever is between the two jaws and whatever is between the two thighs means a private part whoever take control of that and not use these two this tongue and the private part in haram way I take the guarantee for him to be given Jannah straight away so Rasulullah sallallahu is guaranteeing Jannah for those who would control their tongue and their private part because these are the two things which cause us trouble which drag us into committing haram most of the time and that is why Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq anhu, every morning he would just hold his tongue and talking to son saying O oh, slave of Allah behave don't ruin my day because you would drag me into hellfire if you're not used properly talking to the whole time Siddiq of the best of the creation after prophets he's concerned about his tongue not to be used in a bad way and we are so lax about that. In fact, we are so not considered or concerned about our tongue that swearing is not a big deal at all. Even in the families, gone are the days when anyone would use any swear word, even the simplest one in the household, everyone look, how could that be? It's common now. Even children using the same foul language among themselves and in front of their parents. And why? Because the media does that. We watch dramas and films together and it's been just foul mouths being used here and there and it becomes a norm now. Among the siblings, even if, if they don't say it directly to you, they're talking and they're using those swear words. You have no choice but to ignore it, move on. How many times would you tell them? And that is a very sad situation to be in where our tongues are used foully and we are seeing ourselves going into this record book on the left side this angel on the left side is recording it all and we would regret now remember on the day of judgment even when we go to Jannah inshallah we will all go to Jannah inshallah the first time without having to go through hellfire even then we would regret one thing even the believers would regret one thing, which is the futility. The thing that they wasted, the time that they wasted. They would say, I wish I did not waste even a second of my life. Then I would have been even closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because what we don't understand now, here we say, I'll be happy if I just get a small place in Jannah. And this is only here though. When we are in Jannah, and we will not be in Jannah through our actions, by the way. We have to do the, uh, the actions in order to attract the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we know that no one would go to Jannah through their actions. Who we'll go through the Jannah? Uh, we we'll go to Jannah through our? Through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What we have to attract. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he mentioned this, one of the companions, Ya Rasulullah, what about you? Your action? He said, not even me. Not even me. Except that my Lord's mercy has wrapped me. So through that I would go to Jannah. So we all enter from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if it's just the mercy work, it is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do we need to do? Just make ourselves a recipient of that mercy. Make ourselves worthy of getting that mercy. Make us a source of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to receive it, to get it. Do good deed, pious acts, to the best of our ability. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make it easy. It is not about my ability. Ah, I can't be. And this is one of the plots of shaitan. Shaitan would say, oh, you know what? The, those were sahaba. This is Abu Bakr Siddiq holding his, his tongue. They're of that level. We don't need to worry about that. But it's not, not about what you could do or you couldn't do. Whatever was in your ability, and you tried your best. That is what is expected of us. That is what is expected of us. 
That is why these angels, according to the vast majority of ulama, these angels sitting right and left, the mad people, you know, those who are subnormal, special need people from their mental capacity, they don't have them. They don't need it because they're straight to Jannah. If small kids, they have it, but they have it for, only for good deeds because the children, before puberty, they're not sinful. No, it does not mean that they should continue to sin because then they become used to of sin and become bad person afterwards. They need to turn into a good person through practice now. But their good deeds are recorded. So that is why the angels will continue to record. Anyway, so the, the time that we waste, be it in talking and chatting, and many a time people will just narrate their story for no reason. Keep talking about some, some story without any benefit. This is futile. Killing time. They say, oh, just getting bored, let's just talk about something. We are killing time here. And when you ask them for anything special, anything which is taking them towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some religious activity, some there, some, oh, let's do this tajweek, oh, I don't have time for that, you know what, I'm very, very busy. And wasting all that time on social media, on watching, how many hours is this five-day cricket match? People just waste their life in there. Even standing there, watching live, traveling for that journey in order to just be there. And they know that they, they're not going to watch it properly. It's only on the screen. That screen is available at home. We're quite happy to waste that much time. But when it comes to learning something positive that would take you to Jannah in the highest, highest ever station, then you know what? All the excuses. That is why on the Day of Judgment we will regret. We will regret like crazy. Because we do not value the significance of seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world. Well, yes, we will see. Inshallah. Ta'ala. But when we are in Jannah, after people have enjoyed their Jannah for years, there will be a sound, a noise, a vo- uh, 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 an announcement saying, O oh people of Jannah, shall we not give you something very special? Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we already given us a lot. Alam tubayyid wujuhana. Have you not made our face radiant, beaming of light? You're so beautiful now. You've got completely different body, like body which is much more appealing. And have you not forgiven all our sins? Have you not given us all of those blessings in Jannah? We don't need anything. We don't think there's anything been missed. Then the hadith says, the veil would be lifted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessed presence would be seen by the naked eyes. Everyone would be able to see their Lord. Yawma yukshafu an saq, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran. Wujuhun yawma idhin nadira. On that day, the certain face would be very radiant, bright, shining and beaming. Ila rabbiha nadira. And they will be able to look at their Lord. This is for people who have dedicated their life for the cause. They set the exam and will focus on exam, not thinking left, right and center, wasting their time, killing the time. So the time is very, very important. Allah says that, as this ayat I just recited for people who did turn up a bit late, ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد Not even a word uttered out of a mouth of a man, someone would have said something, man or woman, they are angels who are watching over this and they would just snatch it, record it straight away. And they don't sleep, by the way. This is their job. And that is why on the Day of Judgment, with our bad deeds, all the sayings, all the stuff, it will be presented. Men would say, مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ What sort of book is this? لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا It has not left anything small or big except it's recorded in here. Even this is recorded here. That is, when they see it, they'll be ashamed of themselves. Everything will be there. Everything will be recorded in there. And that is why when we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness, we have that feel that, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّكَ تُحْعَفُوُّ Oh Allah, you are the eraser, the effacer, and you want to, you love 
be facing and removing. Fa'afu and Nisa, please remove my bad deeds from the record. Means we are hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would wipe it. So the, one of the explanations of wiping is that these are there, but they've been crossed in such a way that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you could see. The individual, we can see our bad deed written there, but it's been crossed off. And we both know, means me and my Lord know what that bad is. I'm scared. And Allah said, don't worry, no one else knows about this. Because you made dua to me and you're so beloved to me, I've erased it from your court. It's there, but only to, so that we know. Angels even don't know. So you'll be happy about that. So we will hope, inshallah, ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would help us with that much of mercy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has got a lot of mercy to offer. But we want only this much. We say, Allah, enough. I've just asked for dua, astaghfirullah. Done. My tawbah is done. Subhanallah. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he once raised his voice to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just once in his lifetime. Not in anger, but was just like a little bit irritated. And that was the incident of, who knows, Hudaybiyah. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam agreed all the conditions that Mushrikun put forth. So Sahal ibn, uh, Sahal, Abdullah ibn Sahal. So he presented. He presented the father of Abu Jandal. So he, he wasn't Muslim then. So he negotiated. Whatever he was presenting, Rasulullah would accept. One of the conditions was anyone who becomes Muslim from Makkans, like Mushrikun, from there, they become Muslim. And if they go to Medina, Rasulullah would return them back. That's the fact. That's the condition. Whereas anyone who leaves Islam from Medina and comes to Makkah, Rasulullah, we would not return him back. Only one-sided. You would go now with all your 1400 people and you would not come to Makkah. We would not let you. They're at the border of Makkah after seven years, six years to perform their Umrah. Only for three days. They wouldn't allow even to go and do the... Not at all. You have to go back. You come next year. Waste all that journey of 1400 people. Not taken in those days, but a lot of efforts, hard you know, walked on, in, in that desert. So this is what they had to go through. And then, we would not have you as Muhammad the Rasulullah. You have to say Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Cross that Rasulullah. We don't believe you to be. Ar-Rahman, no, no, no. We don't believe in Rahman. We believe in Allah only. So every condition, Suhail ibn Amr was his name, sorry. Suhail ibn Amr was his name. Became Sahabi afterwards. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would accept everything. Until Abu Jandal, the son, he came and he was chained. He had the shackles and he was bleeding and bruising. He managed to escape. He's the son of Suhail ibn Amr, the person who is having this negotiation. And he came and said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Muslim, I'm here. Please help me. I came out of this you know, prison after my father left. He managed to come out. And Suhail ibn Amr said, he slapped his sons. How dare you come out? Oh, Muhammad, this is the first thing. We just had a pact. I want him back. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Sahaba were like, you know, they're seeing this man in that torture, you know, completely bruised and bleeding and so tired and exhausted. A fugitive. He said, Sahil said, no, not at all. This is the first one. If you don't, I'm closing the chapter, I'm going back. No, no acceptance of the conditions, no pact. Rasulullah said, just for my sake, we haven't signed the contract yet. It's been negotiated. And Sahaba were like, my goodness, Ya Rasulullah, please don't, don't, don't. We just... And he himself started crying, Ya Rasulullah, are you going to send me back to the situation that I was in? And I'm not sure that I'd be able to persevere with my faith. This is a big torture for me. They've been beating me day in, day out. This is my father, but he's... <laughs> most strict father ever. Sahaba started crying. Sayyidina Umar was very shocked. Everyone was. So he said, Ya Rasul, are we not true, are we not true followers of the true religion? You are not the true prophets. So why are we, you know, taking everything on face value and literally bending over backwards, so to say, metaphorically, to please them? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at that point was having revelation. And he didn't realize Rasulullah was sitting like that and then revelation started coming. 
he got shocked. He, he went, is it coming against me? He came out. But he was like a little bit forceful in his, in his argument. Rasulullah didn't say a word because he was not listening to him. He was rather focused on this revelation. He came out and he complained this the same thing to Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. And Abu Bakr Siddiq held him like this and said, Stay quiet, O man. This, this is our prophet and he knows what he's doing. Not a word out. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq you know, calmed him down. And then revelation came. And the revelation was? What was the revelation? What was the revelation after this? Barakallah feek. Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. Indeed, we have given the manifest victory to you, O Muhammad and Muslim. Sahaba, is it victory? Yes, this is victory. And Sahaba, subhanallah. And then they realized. Now, that was the one time Sayyidina Umar radiallahu raised his voice, not in a negative sense, it was just like you know, trying to support this brother who they all saw. And Rasulullah himself was heartbroken with that. And yet, with this word he uttered, he said, I do not remember how many slaves in my life I have freed in order to get forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I do not know how many times I've done istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get my sin from my record book wiped out. I do not know how much wealth I have paid to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just for this one thing that I've done. Although there was no blame on him, no one said anything. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't say anything. But that is the cautiousness and care of those Sahaba. And this is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man samata naja, the one who stayed quiet has become successful. He is delivered, he is done. But we don't know any limits. We have no limit when we start talking. Even for the positive thing, we have to come up with something that will spoil the game. Even when I'm mentioning something nice and I've got this, you know, YouTube or whatever channel people go on, I have to taint it with something haram. Either in the beginning or at the end. In the name of, oh, it's all okay. You just make it attractive. Make it like this. If you don't do it, people don't enjoy it. There are many things that we do. And this is a shaitanic plot. This is the deception of the devil. In order to make sure that we... Because they know. We are not the group of Muslims who come to masjid that he could swerve away from the fact that you believe in Allah. We are not going to leave that. He knows. This group is not going to leave Islam. The practicing Muslims. So spoil their deen through their action. Make them feel good about themselves. Make them arrogant about themselves. Let them use their tongue in a negative way. And so in it, they feel it's all okay and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will just keep getting unhappy about us. So we have to take stock of what we say. A lot of that is haram. That needs to be sorted out without any, any discussion. There should be just full stop. If you are in habit of swearing, and I can guarantee you very, very soon, it will be in your family, in the household. Those friends who think that we swear among our friends is just out of fun. We just use those foul language. It is only boys and men out in the, you know, wherever they go. And if this is just a boy type thing, men type thing. No, it will come inside the house. The minute you are out of your control, anger, rage, upset, for whatever reason, you would use the same words in front of your children, your wife, even your parents. And they get into this habit of using it. Most Muslims, they cannot control their tongue inside the house. They become abusive straight away to the children or whoever is their sub subordinate. And likewise, on the street, you would find Muslims swearing. Someone who just crossed them in the car. We can't control that. They are not bothered about what we say. It's my tongue, I can do whatever. No, you would realize on the day of judgment. It's all been written down. So tongue is extremely important to take care of. Obviously, there are many things to control. But tongue is really important. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadi. Muslim, the believer is the one, the Muslim, the true submitter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The authority is the person from whose tongue and hands others are saved. And Imam Nawawi rahmatullah said, Muslim, non-Muslim alike. Everyone is saved from their tortures, from their atrocities of any sort. 
from their cruelty. And Mufti Taqi Usmani Sahib, Damat Barakatumul Aliya, he said that mafhu mukhalif, there's a concept in fiqh, that when you get something positive, there is counter side to that. So if you did torture someone, if you did said, if you did say something bad to someone and make them feel hurtful, you know, hurt them, cause them harm, either with your hand or with your tongue, what is it a sign of? Who are you then? He said, kufr. If you're Muslim to be good to others and not damaging them, what if you do not do and you're on the other side? Who are you? The opposite of Muslim. He said, how grave the sin is. So you can't be using your tongue and your hands against anyone unjustly, including children, your own family members. And we're quite relaxed about this. We need to be very careful. May Allah give us tawfiq to understand and work our way so that we can benefit ourselves and our children.